Welcome to Black Health Matters. I'm Daryl Armistead, your host. This episode is a Zoom recording of Howard University group session led by Dr. Clive Callender. That's very appropriate because uh, uh, shortly almost everybody will have uh, received uh, a vaccine. And uh, this just kind of gets you into thinking of uh, what uh, Clint Walker talked about uh, after you get the vaccine. You still have to uh, do some things. Uh, it's interesting that uh, over time, by, by June, many of the places that have been closed will be open. And so, uh, uh, because people have been, some many people will have been vaccinated. Some people don't uh, realize how important it is to continue uh, the way we've been doing it until it's safe. It's, and so the wearing of the mask, physical distancing, and washing hands is, is still important. Now, it's interesting, they, they talk about hanging out with other people who've been vaccinating is an interesting idea, especially if you know they've been actually vaccinated. And if you uh, uh, have been vaccinated, you actually have a a card that demonstrates that you actually have been vaccinated. And if you don't have that card, uh, uh, it's questionable whether you have to believe that they've actually been vaccinated. Restaurants is interesting. Uh, they point out again that outdoor uh, is much safer than in indoors, but uh, uh, traveling is interesting. Uh, uh, the Airline has forgotten their promise about the middle seat. And so if you fly, uh, the plane's gonna be packed. Uh, but the, uh, the ventilation is much better than it ever was before. So it's a little safer. Gyms are still problematic, um, but uh, will it ever be so? I don't know, but uh, be careful when you go to gyms. Go to the dentist, again, uh, uh, Ventilation is the key. The dentists have always worn uh, protective gear, so they will continue to. Uh, Speakers. Any comments? I didn't. I, I, did I miss anybody? Oh. Uh, Dr. Callender, one hint um, or tip I got from a, a friend who works in a hospital. It says that take a picture of your vaccination card the proof of vaccination in your phone, keep it in your phone um, because the paper is hard, you know, can be lost easily, but. That's a good idea. It's good, good, good tip. Yeah. Good tip, good tip. Someone just sent me something a few minutes ago saying once you receive the final card, do not laminate it. It doesn't work at airports or someplace else. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind too. Okay. I guess put it in a plastic sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, I put it in my passport. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, now it's interesting. Thirty percent of COVID survivors may have PTSD. I think it's uh, it's, it's likely that they have PTSD. Yeah. Uh, Post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, being on those ventilators and all those things. They they're going to have PTSD. Uh, the the the, the, uh, the, the, the mental fallout. There was also an article, a couple of articles about um, uh, dementia or ventilator related dementia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can you imagine being on a ventilator for weeks and months and uh, then, then suddenly getting off the ventilator? And can you imagine all of the uh, nightmares you'd have? Yeah. Yeah. Post traumatic stress disorder is. Uh, uh, widely underappreciated problem of, uh, and it has so many different causes. Yeah, COVID is just one of them, and of course we're seeing other mental health side effects of COVID. With the students who stay at home and don't get to school, uh, committing suicide and other things. So and it affects uh, African Americans so disproportionately that it's something that. Uh, 
we need more help with, especially mental health help with. <laughs> this is interesting. Why has, has the flu appeared to disappear? Uh, and this is uh, usually the peak of this flu season, but not this year. Wonder why. And, um, and I think it's. Uh, I think it's not surprising. I think it's because we're we're being more careful. We're washing yeah. hands and wearing the mask. Yes, that's a big right. deal. yes, that's right. And uh, so it means we, so it means we know what to do in the future if when we get past this. Uh, whether we do it or not is another story. But uh, yeah, it's interesting because. Uh, there's so many flu deaths anyway, uh, but uh, this year the, the hospitalizations and deaths are down from flu. So, and then uh, uh, this is an interesting promise. So that uh, by the end of May, everybody will have a vaccine. Merck is going to help uh, Johnson and Johnson and. The one shot vaccine. Uh, there, there's, there's still a, there's an article that talks about um, whether or not, when you look at the 95% of uh, uh, the two vaccines, uh, Pfizer and Moderna, and you look at the 70% of uh, Johnson and Johnson, is 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 that going to be a source of concern about whether you got the right vaccine? Uh, well, uh, that, that remains to be seen, but uh, one thing is clear, you need to be vaccinated. And, and, and it's also clear that uh, uh, the initial uh, hesitation on the part of the Black community to be vaccinated has kind of uh, uh, been lost uh, to follow up because there's so many people who are trying to get vaccinated. And having uh, stress because they haven't been vaccinated. So, uh, and you know, I I I, I uh, post a newsletter uh, for my church about why African Americans need to be vaccinated. And one of the things that you have to remember is that everybody's getting the vaccine. Uh, people of color, people not of color. So that uh, whatever they're doing to us, they're doing to everybody else. So. So having that kind of fear is uh, uh, inappropriate. Uh, but people will, will still have that. Any comment about that? Dr. Counts, I have a question. <clears throat> is, is it the, um, the COVID vaccination, is that the reason why the flu has been less of a problem? Yeah. And is it, if that's the case, will this, is the COVID a one-time or will it be something that will be taken in the, the later years to help with the flu? Well, you asked several questions, so I'll, I'll answer them one at a time. <laughs> in terms of the first question, in terms of uh, do I think the COVID vaccination stopped the flu, the answer would be no. I believe okay. the exactly. behavior that we have been using, social distancing, masking, and uh, washing our hands are the reason uh, that's the first answer to the, that question. The second question is we don't know, uh, for example, after the Spanish flu, you notice uh, we've had to take flu shots every year. Mm -hmm. And it is possible that we may have to take COVID shots every year. So it remains to be seen. We don't know the answer to that question yet, but we will know shortly because we were, we're looking at, at the antibody titers of the people who got the vaccine in uh, September. And by next September, we'll know whether the antibody titers remain high. If they don't, then that means we will all need to be vaccinated uh, periodically. So the answer isn't out yet, but it, it, it is possible that just like the flu vaccine, we may need to take COVID vaccines annually as well, but we don't know the answer to that yet. Okay, does that answer those two questions that you asked? Yes, thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, those who are gym, gym people uh, will uh, 
find that uh, there's still a concern about going to gyms. Actually, there's always been a concern about going to gyms if they aren't clean. So that uh, if they use the same kind of uh, cleanliness that they use for COVID, that would protect uh, a lot of people. I know a number of people who got infections while at the gym and uh, it's uh, something that uh, people who, who are exercising and who go to gyms think is very important. But all of the, the things that we're doing, the mask, the six feet, the washing hands, all uh, play a part. Dr. Callender, I posted a, um, a website that's uh, a free exercise websites. Anybody who doesn't want to go to the gym can use that at home. <laughs> good, good. There's no, no reason why you can't exercise at home anyway, so uh, that's nice. Good, thank you. Um, now this is <laughs> this is interesting uh, article uh, about uh, uh, which uh, kind of plays into what we talked about today relative to the administration of the vaccine and uh, how uh, a number of blacks who are unable to get out, and disabled and, and other factors that were discussed today uh, result in uh, uh, them not getting the vaccine. And uh, this is uh, one of the uh, critical issues that really hasn't been uh, completely figured out yet in terms of how do you get those people who have not been vaccinated, vaccinated, who want to be vaccinated. And uh, uh, we've already heard about the many factors that are involved. And uh, I think it's, it requires us to be very sensitive and empathetic as, as, as everyone has been. Uh, and I think that there's no question that the church is being involved plays a major role in uh, addressing and, and answering many of the questions about why many of the black, brown, and poor communities do, have not been vaccinated like the uh, upward mobile and uh, rich communities have. But it remains a fact. Uh, but the more churches get involved, the better off we are. And the more we, we understand what, uh, what others have talked about in terms of taking the vaccine to them in some instances, uh, becomes uh, critical. J&J, uh, &J, I guess uh, everybody knows now that this is the one-shot uh, uh, vaccine. Uh, and uh, this will help ensure that everybody in America that wants to be vaccinated will be vaccinated. And that now becomes more likely, although it may not occur until uh, late spring or early summer. But uh, uh, I think uh, in this country, we will get to a point where everyone who wants to be vaccinated uh, will be vaccinated. Unfortunately, that's not the case in other countries outside the United States. Uh, and so uh, places in Africa and other places that aren't rich uh, uh, don't have the vaccine. Even, uh, uh, I guess, it's, uh, parts of Korea don't have the vaccine. So uh, it's not equitable across the globe. Medications. Uh, and that's a concern. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody have any reservations about taking the Johnson Johnson vaccine? Or anybody have any concerns that? Uh... I have mine. My only concern seems like it was approved fast, or the process was a lot faster than Pfizer and Moderna. Um, why is that? Well, the process is the same for all of them. Yes, but Pfizer and Moderna, it took a while before we had a vaccine approved, months 
well, it's probably been months mm-hmm. with Johnson and Johnson, but Johnson and Johnson seemed like it just came into play. And within a month or two, it's approved in here in our area, ready to put in your arm. No difference. It, the process is the same for the FDA uh, for both. It's just that it, 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 uh, you may not have been aware when it was first introduced mm-hmm. to FDNA, but the process is essentially the same. No. But still, the efficacy is different, correct? Oh, yes, the efficacy is different. 70% versus 95%. Yes. I was aware of Johnson & Johnson working on their vaccine last year. So if anything, uh, it yeah. took longer for them to get a, uh, approval you know, throughout their whole process than the other two. Yeah, and I think it was because of the, uh, the competition, the 95% versus 70%. Well, and also I, the one uh, dose versus the two doses. Yes, I had heard about Johnson & Johnson some time ago, and they were calling them the sleeping giant. They were like, watch out for Johnson & Johnson. They're going to come through, and they're going to have this one shot. And, you know, people are going to say, whoa. But it's been a while. Johnson & Johnson's been working yeah. on it for a while. Yeah, there were at least half a dozen manufacturers that were trying to do vaccines last year. And some of them have not been successful, like Merck. Uh, they failed in their tests to have any type of decent, decent eff- eff- efficacy, and so now they're helping out J&J with production. Yeah, because they didn't have as many vaccines as, as uh, Moderna and Pfizer did, and this is the article that talks about it, yeah. And uh, coming to think of it, you know, I got Pfizer last week at CVS. I, I just wish I got J&J because they had their, uh, uh, I mean, they did the, uh, what do you call that? The initial, you know, on everybody, on people, you know, the, uh, what is, uh, I don't know what it's called, but we're in South Africa, England, different variants. At that yeah. time, it did the Pfizer, they didn't have the variants. So I like the J&J better, really. I wish I had this one. Well, actually the tests for the, uh, demonstrate that the, the uh, Pfizer and Moderna are better for the variants. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Yeah, because as a matter of fact, that there were some, some questions about the ability of J&J to, to address the variants. Right, but is it because you have to take oh. But the whole answers are not out yet. But anyway, the early, uh, that's one of the reasons why it took a little longer as well. They were, uh, had questions about the variants. Oh, okay. You know, and I also think that J&J is good for the homeless people because a lot of them will not come back for a second one. So it might be nice just just to give one shot, you're over. Good point. Good point. Yeah, the other thing about J&J is the the mechanism of the uh, vaccination is the mechanism of the vaccine is different. Yes. It's DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the others are in a, yeah. When will children be able to receive their shot? Or are they going to give them to children? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, Fauci talked about that earlier. It's likely to be in the summertime. When you say children, you mean under 16, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, when, when they have completed the studies, they're doing the studies now. And when they've completed the studies to see that it's safe, then they will... Uh, uh, indicate so and that's when so i think this projection was in may that maybe by that time all the tests would be done uh you know this is something that uh, people who had covid and have that fatigue and muscle pain uh they call it long covid uh but uh it's uh problematic if you have it, chronic fatigue syndrome and uh, brain fog, of course, that's a nice term for uh, uh, the fact that your brain isn't working right. Uh, But that plus the fatigue and the muscle pain are lingering symptoms. Uh, So that uh, COVID is no fun as, as, uh, uh, as, uh, I guess, Dr. Whitlock pointed out as he, he dealt with his mother at as she died and, and and their whole family seemed to have a COVID. It's no fun whether you survive it or not. If you survive it, still the long-term effects are with you. So 
So it's, it's a disease that you'd like to prevent rather than to, to have treated. Yeah, I saw an article in today's news about brain fog, and it was saying that um, COVID is developing large cells called megakerocytes that are blocking oxygen supply to brain capillaries, and it's causing the brain fog. So, you know, it's not that uh, they found a, a cure for it yet, but at least they're on the right track to finding out what's causing the, the brain fog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's a tough thing to have when you have that computer in your brain that uh, doesn't connect things. That's something that's uh, problematic, even worse than some of the other symptoms. Now, this is uh, <laughs> tensions over vaccine equity, which is what uh, we've been talking about today. Um, uh, and uh, rural versus urban America and, and the kind of things that we, we talked about today, the lack of, of uh, everybody being able to get be vaccinated. And uh, it's, it's, it's almost like it's territorial. Uh, it's, it's rationing, but it's territorial rationing. And, uh, and we know that there are uh, people who go to, I have a friend who's in, uh, Louisiana now because you could easily get vaccinated there. Wow. Some people are going to Florida because they can get easily vaccinated there. Red so this, state versus blue state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's an issue that uh, tests our ability to be equitable in our distribution of anything, uh, and it's and that's why it's so important. Last week, uh, Dr. Kerry talked about being on the different uh, boards to try to ensure that people understand what equity is all about. Uh, Texas. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is hard. What, what can you say? Texas is always doing something. So what, what else can you say? I heard Texas wanted to be its own country. Yeah, well, that's, that's always been the case. It's <laughs> <one> new. <laughs> it's still new. I think this is going to be the last slide. I have to kind of have to leave after this slide, but uh, Texas has always considered itself a, a nation unto itself. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's going a bit far, though. Yeah, going a bit far. Uh, it's going to get to the point where uh, people come from Texas will have to be looked at differently. Yeah, which is not good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much for- yeah.